Uh, well, welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. And this entire week, we're going to be talking about all the automation features in Photoshop. It may actually spill into next week. And honestly, I kind of hate this stuff. I find it really boring, but it's really, really powerful. And it's pretty, it is cool when you, when you learn about it and you see how bits and pieces of it will work into your workflow. And it's so useful. I cannot overstate how useful this stuff is. So today we're going to talk about just the straight up batch option in Photoshop. And in fact, I have uh, a folder full of images here named batch. Just six little images we're going to be batch processing uh, in a few different ways. So before we get into it, this tutorial is sponsored by our good friends at WP Engine. It's the best WordPress hosting out there. Is, is there even uh, an argument? I'm not sure. I run tutvid.com on their hosting. It's been great. I've had them for a few years. Um, and it's great. All the servers, they're, they're optimized for WordPress sites. It's awesome. Go to, uh, go to tutvid.com slash WP hyphen engine. The URL will appear on the screen. There'll also be a link down in the description. Um, and you'll get an exclusive discount for tutvid.com viewers. So go check that out. So let's go file automate batch. And by the way, you can do all this batch processing from Adobe Bridge as well. But who uses Adobe Bridge? I don't know. So we can open up batch. And we've got a few things here. The first and foremost is we need to choose the action that we're going to be running on the images that we're batch processing. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You choose the folder of images or the, the folder of actions and the actual specific action. I'm going to go with this color grade action here. Um, then the sources, you can choose a folder, a file that's been imported, the open files in Photoshop now, or uh, the files in Adobe Bridge. I'm going to roll with folder and I'm going to hit choose. And in fact, I'm going to choose here the batch folder and hit the choose button. Now we have a couple options here, override action open commands. Override action open and the save as commands are a little complicated to understand how they work. My recommendation right off the bat would be just keep them off. Um, but the open command, basically you can see when this option is on, source files will be open from the source folder only by open steps in the action. So your action specifically has to say, hey, go open this image. If there are no open steps, no files will be opened. So what this means is if we tick this on and we're only batch processing these files in the folder, nothing's even going to open. So I keep that shut off basically all the time if I'm batch processing. Include subfolders, that's self-explanatory. This is interesting. Suppress file open options dialogs. This just basically does not allow any dialog boxes that would appear when you open a file to appear, not least of which would be the camera raw editor. The worst thing in the world would be to run a batch process on 100 camera raw images and have them all open the camera raw editor. There's really no automation because you still have to sit there and go through each of them and say, yep, open image, open image, open image. So it's nice to check that on. And then I also usually suppress color profile warning stuff like, hey, this is CMYK and not RGB or sRGB and not Adobe... Uh, uh, RGB 1998 or whatever. Uh, errors, you can have the whole process of uh, action stop if it runs into an error or simply log the errors to file. It can be interesting to log the errors to file or useful, I should say, because if you're batch processing, let's say, a thousand images and you let it run overnight, the worst thing in the world would be to wake up in the morning and realize the whole thing stopped at like the third image because it ran into an error. If you just log the errors to the file, Photoshop will go through batch process everything and you can just save this text file and it'll tell you, hey, look, there's an error in this file and that file. And you can go and just adjust those files manually if need be. Destination. You can choose none, in which case it just opens the file in Photoshop and doesn't save it anywhere, uh, or all the files in this case. You can choose to save and close. If you save and close, it's going to just overwrite those JPEG images that we uh, have in that folder. If you choose folder, then you choose a new folder where you can save these. So let's do this. Let's just uh, create a new folder here. Uh, so the untitled folder will be called processed. That should be self-explanatory. Hit the choose button. And then override override action save as commands. We can tick that on. You can see when this option is on, files will be saved to the destination folder only by save as steps in the action. If there are no save or save as steps, no files will be saved. So essentially, we'll do all of this work and nothing will get saved. So unless you have at the end of your action in Photoshop, like you've recorded going and saving as and all of that, I'm going to keep that shut off because we won't save any of the stuff that we just did. And then you can build your file, the document name, extension. If you want to throw a, a serial number in there, go ahead, or you know, month and date and all that good stuff, great. And you can tick on compatibility for whatever you want, Unix, Windows. I'm going to roll with just the Mac OS for now, and I'm going to hit the OK uh, button. Now you're going to see, as soon as I begin processing, Photoshop very quickly processes the first one. It says, hey, where do you want to save the .psd? Uh-oh, I don't want to save a PSD at all. I want this to be a JPEG and I just want it to save automatically. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cancel and it's going to say, hey, look, a command was canceled. Would you like to continue to the next file or stop? We're going to stop. 
We have our file open here in Photoshop and you can see it's placed all of these adjustment layers. Um, the reason it's saving as a PSD is because the image isn't flattened. So knowing that, I'm actually just going to close this image. We can close all of our images, really. I'm going to leave one open, though, because we're going to go into our actions. We're going to open up that color grade action. We're going to go all the way to the bottom of the color grade action, select the last item, and I just need to unlock my background layer here so this command appears. I've got my last option selected in, in that action. I'm going to choose the record button because now we're adding to the end of this uh, action. I'm going to go layer flatten image. You can see it's going to say, hey, flatten the image at the end of that action, and I can go ahead and stop. So now what's going to happen, I can close this JPEG. Uh, I don't need to save it. We can go, go file, automate, batch. And what we can do here is keep everything the same. We've got that same color grade action. Everything's good. Now we can run our action. It's going to automatically process everything. Well, here it's asking, asking me about the JPEG options. I probably, I think I only have to hit it for that uh, image. Yeah, there we go. And we've gone ahead and processed all those images. Great. Where is my finder window? Here we go. And you can see here what we've got is a folder full of processed images. And all of these images here are slightly falling off screen, but you can see they all have that very bluish effect. They all immediately saved instantaneously. Didn't ask me to do anything. Um, and it was all because we added the little flatten option at the end of our um, at the end of our action. You can drag this into Photoshop to open it up, and you can see it's just a flattened JPEG image as, as you would expect anywhere. So we took that entire folder of uh, non-processed JPEGs and just threw some sort of processing on them. So, you know, this isn't the greatest processing in the world, but the point is you could take an entire folder of raw files or JPEGs and quickly, very quickly, batch process them using the Automate Batch feature in Photoshop. So, for batch in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutfid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.